The urgency for Congress, Mr. Speaker, to address the shortfall in the highway trust fund grows with every passing day. Road and eventually mass transit improvements in every state are at risk of grinding to a halt in a matter of weeks in the heart of summer construction time. Secretary Fox notified all states last week that their federal funding will drop by an average of 28 percent starting next month. In my home state of Virginia, nearly every mode of transportation will be negatively affected. More than half of next year's road and transit projects were supposed to be funded with federal dollars. If we don't replenish the trust fund just in Virginia alone, 149 bridge replacements will be put on hold. 175 aging buses and train cars will not be replaced. 44 smaller transit systems will not be able to maintain service. 350 transportation projects will grind to a halt. And when I hear my friends on the other side of the aisle say, no, no, we're concerned about jobs. Well, 43,000 jobs in Virginia alone will be lost if we do not replenish that trust fund. In addition, many states have advanced projects based solely on the federal government's participation, uh, including private activity bonds used to finance such projects. If that money dries up, states would have to put projects on hold or redirect other precious state resources to cover the debt service or risk default. I was relieved when my House Republican friends backed away from their reckless proposal to hold the Highway Trust Fund hostage unless their demands were met to eliminate Saturday mail delivery service and the Postal Service. Set aside for the moment that paying for an on-budget transfer into the Trust Fund with off-budget Postal Service violates both PAYGO and CUTGO budget rules here in the House. That fundamentally flawed, non-germane proposal would have undermined a trillion-dollar American mail in industry that supports more than 8 million jobs and represents 7 percent of our GDP. There's simply no nexus between funding transportation and the Postal Service, despite the efforts of Republican leadership to suggest otherwise. While the focus now shifted to finding a short-term funding fix, I'd argue that simply patching it over will not help our state DOTs, which need much more certainty and long-range planning. Transportation is not a short-term proposition. It's long-term planning, long-term investment streams that are needed. The federal government historically has been a partner in funding our nation's infrastructure, a key partner. But that level of investment has eroded over time. Just look at the Transportation Appropriations Bill. It provides less funding for highway and transit construction than last year and far less than the administration proposed for a 21st century transportation system in America. Public spending and infrastructure now is half what it was as a percentage of GDP in the 60s and 70s. No great country can walk away from infrastructure investment and stay great. I commend Senators Murphy and Corker on a bipartisan basis for tabling a proposal to increase the gas tax by 12 cents over two years and index it to inflation. It's been more than 20 years since the federal gas tax was last adjusted and those dollars have lost 40 percent of their value in that time period. I know some of my colleagues will cringe at such a proposal, but funding for transportation is not going to miraculously fall from the sky. Many of us have supported efforts to advance innovative financing solutions, but at the end of the day, what we really need is more funding. The 495 express lanes here in the nation's capital, a partnership in my district, is considered a model for innovation. But Four out of five dollars used to fund that project were federal dollars in some fashion, whether it was federal trust fund dollars, federally subsidized loan, or the sale of bonds that received federally preferred tax deduction. Again, looking at Virginia, last year the Virginia General Assembly, a Republican House of Delegates, a Democratic Senator, Senate, and a Republican governor came together for the first time in uh, over 27 years and actually funded transportation long-term, a multi-billion dollar effort. If the General Virginia General expired. Assembly can do it on a bipartisan basis, so can we. I yield back. General's time has expired. The chair